Hey everyone, welcome to Media Dumpster, and today I have for you guys a twisty, turny, crazy film to talk about from the wild mind of M. Night Shyamalan. If you're not familiar with this guy, he is notorious for making some of the most divisive movies ever, and within his movies lie outlandish twists and turns at every corner. Whether it's a creepy pair of grandparents or his recent film Trap following a serial killer trapped at a concert with his daughter, M. Night t takes some of the most intriguing film concepts and makes some of the most crazy films I've ever seen. Today we're looking at Old, released in 2021, and this is actually based off of a graphic novel titled Sandcastle. The film follows a group of characters that find themselves trapped on a beach where time moves rapidly, so naturally our characters age, and in some cases just lose their damn minds. There's a lot of weirdness to get to, and I'm not getting any younger. Uh, l literally. <laughs> Let's get into it. This is Old. The movie begins with the Kappa family on their way to a resort hotel for their vacation. You said five minutes. Technically, it's been way, way more than five minutes. Are we close? Stop wishing away this moment. Boy, oh boy, Shyamalan, you really know how humans talk. The family arrives to the resort and immediately hit the beach. A, a normal one, though. No rapid aging included. What are your names and what do you do for a living? Oh, well, I'm Sophia Watson. I'm a chef. I'm Greg Mitchell. I'm a cop. Cool. Okay, so Trent asks people their name and occupation, and I can't help but feel like that's... What, what's the word here? Uh, oh yeah, lazy writing. I, I mean, maybe I'm being too harsh, though. Maybe that was a one-time thing. What are your names and occupations? What are your names and occupations? Really? My mom might let me FaceTime you. Then we can be friends. You can come over to my house and make up stories. Then we can go to the same college together and become neighbors with mortgages. <laughs> cool. Shyamalan, like, you know you had two daughters, right? Was this actually how they talked as kids? Because I'm concerned. Friska and Guy talk about how this is their last vacation together before they tell the kids about not only the fact that their marriage is failing, but also that Friska's got an ovarian tumor growing inside her. You're always thinking about the future. It makes me feel not seen. Yeah, you guys are really doing a bang-up job of keeping that failing marriage a secret. They have no clue. Well done. We meet some more characters the next morning, including a surgeon named Charles, his mother Agnes, his wife Crystal, and their daughter Kira. We also meet a nurse named Jaren and his wife Patricia, who comes down with a seizure. Our characters are told about the private beach via the resort manager, and they're all driven there by none other than M. Knight himself. Okay, guest checklist. Books, sunscreen, did everybody leave their passports in their safes? I don't want anybody to lose anything. Uh, yeah, M. Night, I think, uh, you forgot something, actually. It's called Well-Written Characters. They arrive on the beach, and I'll actually give this movie credit. The location is really beautiful. They did a bang-up job picking this out. Anyway, Maddox spots a famous rapper on the beach, and you will not believe what his name is. That's mid-sized sedan. What? I'm sorry? What's your name? Mid-sized sedan. Do you collaborate with large-sized station wagon and small-sized convertible? While Trent's swimming in the water, he finds a dead woman who is revealed to be the lover of mid-sized sedan. I'm sorry. I know it's really bad. This woman is dead. It's horrible. But I can't act like that's not hilarious. Oh, damn. And apparently this guy can't even act upset. What the hell was that? Hey, camera guy, can we get everyone in the frame? What the hell is happening? Now we're looking at this girl's ear for like 30 seconds. Are you drunk? Things start getting worse for our group as Jaren blacks out trying to leave the beach. Agnes dies and the kids get older. The dog has died. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I was only just alive. Okay. I'll give you this movie, you somehow made a dog dying hilarious. I was only just alive. Yeah, that's kind of how death works. You're alive one second and then you're not. Friska's tumor starts growing at an alarming rate due to the effects of the beach and the group has no choice but to operate on her. But since the cuts they make close up immediately, they decide to hold their stomach open with their hands. Y'all ain't wearing gloves, y'all are taking your sweet ass time taking this thing out, but sure, she lives. 
This is, this is Shyamalan logic. So Dan discovers that his lover has decomposed to nothing but bones, but don't expect too much of a reaction. Damn! 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 Thanks for having me in this movie, M. Night. I, I just wanted to call because I'm kind of confused. I got the script you sent me, and all my lines are just, damn. Or, oh, damn. Uh, I mean, if that's all I'm going to be saying in this movie, I don't really know if it's worth my time. I mean, I'm a fan of your work, but I, I don't know. Wait, this movie's going to make how much? <sighs> Fuck it, I'm in. Oh, damn it is. Jaren tries explaining how the rapidly aging beach works, but to be honest, I'm just so distracted by this ridiculous dialogue that I don't care. Sorry, this is nonsense. Let's not shut down everyone's experience. What experience? This isn't a five-star restaurant. The experience gets worse when Trent gets Kira pregnant, and no, don't ask me how that works, please. I'll lose my damn mind. Kira gives birth, but due to the rapid flow of time on the beach, the baby dies immediately from lack of attention. And to make matters worse, actress Abby Lee definitely cried to sleep after she saw this camera angle. Charles loses it and ends up stabbing Sedan to death. Jaren tries to swim away to find help, and now it seems like the perfect time to bring up Frisca and Guy's failing marriage. I found out about this tumor, and I got scared. I stare at the remains of nameless people in glass cases, and I kept thinking I'm going to be one of those people. Does that make any sense? Not really. You found out you had a tumor, and the first thing you thought of was, I need to cheat on my husband. You're an adult. Be stronger for everyone. You know, I really like Thomas and Mackenzie. If you're not familiar with her, she was in Jojo Rabbit, Last Night in Soho. She's very good. But I don't know what the hell the direction was for that scene. It turns out Jaron was unable to make it to safety, and it's safe to say I'll definitely miss him telling us his name. My name is Jaron. It's Jaron, by the way. I'm Jaron. I'm Jaron! Kira tries to climb up the rocks, but due to her blacking out from trying to leave, she goes unconscious and falls to her death. Patricia isn't far behind her, she has a seizure and dies as well. No! What's happening to her? Oh my god, she was fine, what, what's happening? She did this earlier in the movie, you, you were right there, what do you mean? Everything continues to go to hell as Guy starts losing his vision, Friska starts losing her hearing, and Crystal's calcium deficiency starts to hit hard. While Trent and Maddox spot someone recording them, Friska and Guy get attacked by Charles, who fears they'll tell everyone about his murder of Sedan. I don't want to be seen! Trent and Maddox find Crystal in psycho mode, but they won't have to worry for long because her bones start breaking and before you know it, she's a human pretzel. This is probably the most disturbing death I've seen in a PG-13 movie in a long time. It's quite eerie. It's rust! when it gets into your bloodstream. Oh no, you explained why I'm dying to the audience because you think they're idiots. With the Kappa family being the only ones remaining, Guy and Friska resolve their marriage problems and die of old age. And considering all the other deaths in this movie, that's a blessing. It's a lot better than being a pretzel or looking like a coin left out in the rain. Trent and Maddox are now close to the age of their parents when the film started and they finally decode a note given to them by the resort owner's nephew. The hell's wrong with Coral? Coral. 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 No, of course it means the coral in the ocean. The pair try to swim through but seemingly drown, and it's revealed that the person recording them was M. Night himself. Big Shyamalan twist in coming! It turns out that the resort manager is running a medical facility underground that uses the beach as a testing ground to see how long people can survive with the medicine they gave them in their drinks. Sixteen and a half years. We cured her of her epilepsy. We'll now fast track trials, make that medicine, and share it with the whole world. Yeah, and I'm sure that'll come with a big old price tag. Trent and Maddox are revealed to have survived swimming through the coral, and by telling the cop that Trent talked to earlier in the movie about everything going on, the resort is flooded with police and shut down. The movie ends with our two survivors safe and sound on their way to an airport, where most likely they have a lot of explaining to do to their family.
old is one of the messiest, poorly written, and nonsensical movies we have looked at on this show. And I absolutely love it. Even when M. Night Shyamalan is bad, it is still hilariously and enjoyably bad. This script makes no sense, the characters are so awkward it's great, and the twist is actually kind of interesting, despite the fact that they could probably test their medicine in a better way than, uh, killing thousands of people. Like I said at the start, M. Night's recent film Trap released last weekend, and it's been pretty divisive, so let me know if you want to see a video covering that film. I definitely would like to do that. There's uh, quite a bit of material for that movie I could think of. Uh, and yeah, that's going to be it for this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, and goodbye. Who the hell is that at this time of night? I'm filming this at 10 o'clock at night. What are you doing here, dude? We need to talk. What a twist!